Hello and welcome to lecture two in equilibrium chemistry. Today we're going to look at the equilibrium constant expression and in fact do some quantitative work around it. Of course these are the knowledge outcomes prescribed by Alberta Learning. They form the basis for the bulk of the diploma exam questions that you'll see. And hopefully you're referring back to this page from time to time to get a sense of how well you're mastering the material. Now that we've introduced the KC, we'll look at several examples and do some mathematics uh, around the, the concept. We'll look at two shortcuts employed to simplify the math in this area, which can get quite complex. The first is known as the perfect square method, while the second is referred to as the small KC method. Um, firstly, though, let, let's derive some KC expressions. With the Bell's chemical equation and the equilibrium law expression for hydrogen gas reacting with chlorine gas to produce hydrogen chloride gas. So here's the equation. You got one mole of hydrogen gas reacting with one mole of chlorine gas uh, in equilibrium with two moles of hydrogen chloride gas. And typically you see a single arrow, arrow here, and we usually read that as to produce, in other words, to produce its products. However, when you see two arrows, it, it, the better expression to use is, is in equilibrium with. So we would say that hydrogen gas plus chlorine gas is in equilibrium with hydrogen chloride gas. The KC expression looks like this. It's the concentration of the products raised to their coefficients divided by the product of the concentration of reactants raised to their coefficients. In this case, the concentration of HCl squared divided by the product of the concentration of H2 times the concentration of Cl2. Question two. One step in the industrial production of sulfuric acid is a, re is a reaction of sulfur dioxide with oxygen to produce sulfur trioxide. Write an equation and a KC expression. So here's the equation. Two moles of sulfur dioxide reacts with one mole of oxygen, and that's in equilibrium with two moles of sulfur trioxide. And here's our KC expression. It's the concentration of the sulfur trioxide squared divided by the product of the concentration of the sulfur dioxide squared times the concentration of the oxygen. Question three. In the future, industry and commerce may more extensively use the combustion of hydrogen as an energy source. Write the equation and the KC. So here's the equation for the combustion of hydrogen. Two moles of hydrogen reacting with one mole of oxygen is in equilibrium with two moles of water vapor. And uh, this, uh, the presence, uh, the production of water vapor in combustion reactions is something that the province is invested in. And typically this is the case in open systems. You're going to have steam coming off of combustion. The KC expression for the reaction then is the concentration of uh, water vapor raised to its coefficient 2 divided by the product of the concentration of hydrogen squared times the concentration of oxygen. One last one of these. In the Haber process, nitrogen reacts with oxygen, rather reacts with hydrogen to produce ammonia. So here's our reaction, and here's our KC expression for the reaction. It's the concentration of the ammonia squared divided by the product of the concentration of nitrogen times the concentration of hydrogen cubed. And these are all equilibrium concentrations, of course. Now we'll do a couple of mathematical problems. Um, and introduce both shortcuts that we referred to previously. Determine the value of the KC for the reaction given the initial concentration of NOBr is 5.0 moles per liter and the equilibrium concentration is 4.5 moles per liter. And here's the reaction as we're given. The KC expression is going to equal the concentration of nitrogen monoxide squared times the concentration of bromine divided by the concentration of NOBr squared and these are all equilibrium concentrations. This is the first question that's going to call upon us to use an ice table to solve for the KC. An ice table is simply a table of concentrations, both at the initial, I, and then representing the change in concentration, C, and then representing the equilibrium concentrations, E. And it looks like this. So left to right, we, sh we draw columns for the molar concentrations of reactants to the forward reaction and products of the forward reaction. And their initial concentrations look like this. We're given the initial concentration of the NOBr at 5.0 moles per liter. And the question says nothing about the other concentrations, so we assume those to be zero. Let's talk about change. Well, the NOBr is going to disappear. It's going to disappear by some unknown amount. And its coefficient is 2, so it's going to disappear at the rate of 2x, negative 2x. 
And I get the 2 by referring to the bromine. The bromine starts at 0, but it's going to appear at some positive concentration. And we'll call that unknown concentration x. And then working backwards then, the NOBR must disappear at double that rate since its stoichiometry is 2 to 1. So it disappears at, uh, at the concentration of 2x. And the NO, uh, the other product, along with the bromine, appears at the concentration of 2x, so plus 2x. At equilibrium then, equilibrium concentrations are initial, minus change in the case of the NOBR, but we're given that at a value of 4.5. For the NO, it's going to be initial plus change, 0 plus 2x, which is just 2x. And for the bromine, it's going to be initial plus change, 0 plus x, which is just x. Now, we're given the value for the NOBR. So the NOBR sets an equation, 5.0 minus 2x equals 4.5. And we can use that to solve for x, and x will equal 0.25 moles per liter. That allows us to rewrite our ice table as follows. Initial concentrations don't change. The change in those concentrations don't change. But we can now solve for the equilibrium concentrations of all species. The NO is 0 0.50 moles per liter, and the bromine is 0.25 moles per liter. We then plug all three of these equilibrium concentrations into our KC expression, and we get a value for the KC at 3.1 times 10 to the minus 3. And of course, the units are dropped. This next question uh, deals with the first of the two shortcut methods for solving the math. I believe it's the perfect square method. Given the reaction and its Kc, determine the equilibrium concentrations for all species. Given the initial concentration of each reactant is 0 0.200 moles per liter. So here's the reaction. Nitrogen plus oxygen is in equilibrium with uh, two nitrogen monoxides. And the Kc value is 0 0.00250. Here's the KC expression. Of course, it's the concentration of NO at equilibrium squared divided by the product of the concentration of nitrogen at equilibrium times the concentration of oxygen at equilibrium. Let's set up our ice table. So left to right, we start with the molar concentrations of the reactants of the Ford reaction, and we end with the molar concentration of the products of the Ford reaction. Initially, we're told that both reactants start at a concentration of 0 0.200 moles per liter, Therefore, we can assume that the nitrogen monoxide starts at zero. There are changes. Well, the nitrogen is going to disappear at some unknown value x. The oxygen is going to disappear at the same unknown value. And the nitrogen monoxide is going to appear at twice that rate, so plus 2x. These are our equilibrium concentrations. For the, the nitrogen, it's going to be initial minus change, 0.200 minus x. It's going to be the same concentration for the oxygen. For the nitrogen monoxide, it's going to be the initial plus the change, 0 plus 2x, which is just 2x. If we plug those into our KC expression, we get an interesting equation. It looks like this. Um, I want you to take a look at the equation, uh, uh, the, sorry, the half of the equation on the right, and you'll notice that both the numerator and the denominator are squared. So we can actually take a square root of both sides, um, and I'll do that here in a minute. First of all, let's plug our Kc value into the expression. You'll notice I've gone to round brackets here. Um, in the previous equation, uh, we were dealing with molar concentrations, but now I want to do some mathematics, so let's plug in our values and use round brackets. You don't have to, but I prefer it. So now you'll notice that both this numerator and this denominator are squared functions. So we can take the square root of both sides like this. And that allows us to simplify the right-hand side of this expression. If we don't do this, we're going to end up with a quadratic and have to solve it using a quadratic formula. Our curriculum doesn't require us to use the quadratic formula, but to solve these questions without it, we use this um, perfect square method. Then we cross-multiply and distribute through the brackets. Looks like this. And we bring this 0.050x term over to the right, and we get this. Finally, we divide, and we get a value for x at 0.00487 dot dot dot. We plug that into our equilibrium concentrations. We take from our ice table to solve for the concentrations of all species at equilibrium. And I'm just going to dump it all on the page here, but we'll go through it line by line. The concentration of nitrogen at equilibrium is the same as the concentration of oxygen at equilibrium, which is 0.200 minus x. We plug the value of x into the equation 
and when we round to sig digs, we get a value of 0.195 moles per liter for both the nitrogen and the oxygen gas. At equilibrium, the, the concentration of the nitrogen monoxide is 2x. We plug the value for x into that equation, and we get a molar concentration for the nitrogen monoxide at equilibrium at 0 0.00976 moles per liter. So there's the first of our two shortcuts, known as the perfect square method. The second method is known as the small kc method, and let's take a look at an example. Calculate the equilibrium concentration of the products when 0 0.200 moles per liter of carbon dioxide partially decomposes into carbon monoxide and oxygen gas. Given that the equilibrium constant for the reaction is 5.6 times 10 to the minus 8. So here's our equation, and here's our kc expression for the equation. We set up our ice table and we're given initial concentration for the carbon dioxide of 0.200 moles per liter. The question says nothing about the other concentrations, so we assume those concentrations are zero. Excuse me, I lost my mouse. We assume both of those concentrations are zero. The change, well, the carbon dioxide is going to disappear at the rate of 2x, the carbon monoxide is going to appear at the rate of 2x, and the oxygen is going to, dis is going to appear at the rate of x. So at equilibrium, we're given these concentrations. Initial minus change in the case of carbon dioxide, 0 0.200 minus 2x. Initial plus change for the carbon monoxide, 0 plus 2x, which is simply 2x. And initial plus change for the oxygen, 0 plus x, which is simply x for the oxygen. We plug those values into our KC expression, and, and then we simplify. And I want to draw your attention to the 2x in this equation right here. We're dealing with a small KC, 5.6 times 10 to the minus 8. And whenever you have a KC expression of 1 times 10 to the minus 3 or smaller, you can use this shortcut. I draw the analogy between two divisions. If you divide by 1,000 or you divide something by 999, you're going to get a very, very similar answer. The difference in that denominator is 1 in 1,000, and it's very small. It's so small that it really doesn't affect the mathematics of these questions. So what we do is we drop this 2x. This 2x is equivalent to the difference between 1,000 and 999. So we literally take a pencil and stroke out that 2x. And that's what I've done here. I've simply dropped the 2x from the denominator when I've gone from this first equation to that second equation. And that simplifies the question. It, it uh, permits you to avoid using quadratics. Then we plug in the value for the KC. We cross multiply. And we take the cube root of both sides. We end up getting a value for x at 8.2425 uh, dot 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 times 10 to the minus 4. If we plug that into our equation then for the uh, equi equilibrium concentrations, we get an equilibrium concentration for the carbon dioxide at 0 0.20 moles per liter. For the carbon monoxide, we get an equilibrium concentration of 1.6 times 10 to the minus 3 moles per liter, and for the oxygen of 8.2 times 10 to the minus 4 moles per liter. Um, if you plug in the raw values for those three concentrations into the initial KC expression, you're going to get 5.6 times 10 to the minus 8, confirming that you're correct. Um, hopefully you found this lecture of some value. I'll see you next time when we talk about Le Chatelier's principle. Thank you.